Hello everyone, my name is Indrani and I will be presenting about the role of glial cells in brain injury and disease. So our first question is, what are glial cells? Simply put, the term glial cells refers to all the types of supporting cells in the brain. The word glia comes from the Greek word for glue, and just like glue, glial cells are responsible for holding the brain together. They share a common goal, to keep the neurons, or signal conducting brain cells, in proper health. We'll discuss the three most common types of glial cells, oligodendrocytes, microglia, and astrocytes, and what happens to them when the brain is injured. Let's start with the healthy brain. We have neurons, which are basically the hallmark of brain cells and brain function. Neurons receive chemical messages from each other in the form of neurotransmitters. Here we have glutamate, an important neurotransmitter that excites neurons into conducting further chemical and electrical signals along their length, known as their axon. Proper brain function rests on the ability of neurons to send and receive messages. Healthy glial cells provide critical support to this process. Let's start with oligodendrocytes. Oligodendrocytes help neurons conduct signals through the process of myelination. In myelination, oligodendrocytes wrap their extensions around the axon of the neuron and create a sort of bubble of fat and protein. This bubble is known as the myelin sheath, and it speeds up the process of sending and receiving messages between neurons. Microglia are the primary immune cells in the brain. They're highly sensitive, and when they detect pathogens or any kind of injury or damage, they rush to signal other glial cells and attack whatever is invading. Microglia are the brain's alarm system, or panic button. Finally, astrocytes are arguably the most important type of glial cell, and they maintain homeostasis in the brain. They recycle neurotransmitters, especially glutamate, which we've seen, and prevent the toxic buildup of wastes, which is critical to proper signal conduction by the neurons. After a neuron is injured, it first signals to microglia, causing it to become activated so that it signals to other glial cells and other microglia in the area to come and prevent the damage. It fir microglia first signal to astrocytes, which become reactive, and these reactive astrocytes grow around the neurons, forming a glial scar that sequesters damage and inflammation to one area repairs the blood-brain barrier, and regulates fluid levels and blood flow in early stages of injury. However, if glial, glial scar formation is severe or prolonged, astrocytes secrete toxic chemicals that both kill neurons and prevent proper glutamate recycling. This impaired glutamate cycling is toxic to neurons as well as to the oligodendrocytes which are then unable to myelate neurons and further the whole cycle of death and damage. Clearly, it's important to target the impaired function of glial cells, because it's hard to tell where they, their ability to help ends and their harm begins. We don't want to in, treatments to interfere with blood vessel repair or fluid balance or injury containment, but we do want to restore the impaired behaviors of glial cells. One way to do this is by repairing glutamate recycling done by astrocytes or by targeting elements of the inflammatory pathway caused by microglia and astrocytes. Ultimately, we want to preserve neuron function by preventing their death and ensuring proper signaling. 